people think that the Everglades is a swamp, but it's actually not. It is the widest, slowest moving river in the United States. At nearly 60 miles wide and moving at a speed of 2.5 miles per day, the Everglades carries thousands of gallons of water from central Florida south through the Everglades and empties into Florida Bay. Much of this water flows through Lake Okeechobee, the largest lake in the southern U.S. As the water enters the Everglades, it travels through freshwater sloughs. Freshwater sloughs are large areas of low-lying land which help to channel this water through the Everglades. Here we are at Shark Valley Slough. Even though the water is moving through the land as a river does, the Everglades is technically classified as a wetland. A wetland is an area of land that is saturated or covered by water permanently or seasonally throughout the year. Wetlands are some of the most biodiverse ecosystems on Earth because they often support both terrestrial and aquatic life. They are also considered to be transition zones where water, nutrients, and sunlight create a unique ecosystem with its own hydrology, soil, topography, climate, vegetation, and fauna. From tundra to tropics, wetlands are found on every continent except for Antarctica. And they are incredibly important as they can have a heavy impact on the surrounding ecosystems as well as on the people who live nearby. The Everglades are located only about an hour's drive from the city of Miami. The Everglades ecosystem provides drinking water for more than 8 million people. With these large developments comes an increasing need for water and also a desire to drain the natural wetlands so that agricultural plots, industry, and other developments can be built. This formed a water management system that redirected water toward the ocean instead of through the Everglades. This resulted in a significant decrease in biodiversity, and it has had a huge impact on the water levels in the park. The water level in the Everglades is surprisingly shallow. It's only around four to five feet deep on average. The deepest is around nine feet deep. Thanks to many different environmental groups and projects, water is starting to flow more naturally through the different ecosystems within the park. Throughout these ecosystems, you can observe different types of wetlands, including marshes and mangrove swamps. Mangrove trees are salt tolerant and can live among the harsh stormy conditions on the coast of Florida. These unique trees are able to stabilize and protect the coastline, reduce erosion, filter water, store a great amount of carbon, and provide habitats for many unique organisms. The Everglades has the largest mangrove ecosystem in the Western Hemisphere. They stretch around the tip of Florida and over to Biscayne Bay. While these trees are very important to the Everglades ecosystem, mangrove forests throughout the world are currently threatened by logging, agriculture, coastal development and construction, overfishing and aquaculture, and pollution. By allowing water to once again move freely through the Everglades and by restoring the mangrove forests, 
they will be able to thrive for years to come. These wetlands provide a variety of ecological services, including water filtration and purification, carbon sequestration, flood protection, habitats for many different species, and cultural services, such as fishing, recreation, tourism, and research. Everglades National Park is home to so many diverse animals and plant life. That's why it's important for us to help protect these wetlands.